In this lecture, we are going to discuss about a Davison and Germer experiment. Dear student, initially it was believed that light behaves as a particle. The behavior of a light as a particle was proved by photoelectric effect and Compton effect. Similarly, it was de Bray who said that if a light behave or if a wave behave like a particle, then a particle or a matter must be associated with a wave or matter may also behave like a wave. So this is called de Broglie hypothesis. So experimentally, Photoelectric effect and Compton effect prove that light behave as a particle. However, it was not proved yet that matter is associated with wave or matter may behave like a wave. So for this, Davison and German performed an experiment. And Davison and German mathematically and experimentally prove that matter is associated with wave. So Davison and Germer validated De Bruyne hypothesis. So, dear student, initially it was believed that light behave like a particle. The particle nature of light was basically proved by experiment which are known as photoelectric effect experiment and also by Compton effect. So, this one, it was De Bruyne who said that if a light, if a light behave as a particle, light behave as a particle, as a particle, then a particle will also behave like a wave. And according to de Broglie, the wavelength of the particle associated with a wave will be lambda is equal to h divided by p whereas lambda is a wavelength of a matter which has an associated wave so this was mathematical equation of proposed by de Broglie for a matter which has an associated waves so this one please keep in mind that the wave nature the particle, uh, the the light behaving as a wave, a light behaving as a particle, was basically proved by photoelectric effect and as well as Compton effect. Whereas particles associated particles are matter associated with waves. Associated with waves was not experimentally and as well as mathematically proved. So it was just student Davison and Germer, Davison and Germer, who 
who mathematically and experimentally prove that matter is have an associated waves or whenever matter moves it has an associated wave with them and the wavelength of associated wave is equal to lambda is equal to h which is a Planck constant divided by p which is a momentum of a matter or momentum of a particle so now student in this lecture we will briefly explain about the davison and germer experiment on the basis of which Javison and Germer prove that matter has associated waves. Javison and Germer prove this experimentally and as well as theoretically. So now let us start or let us discuss about the construction or the basic instrument which was used by Davison and Davison Germer experiment. So now student, let us discuss about the Davison and Germer apparatus, which was used in Davison and German experiment. Davison and Germer apparatus. The Davison and Germer operator apparatus consists of an electron gun. Electron gun is a device which work in a very high voltage and which produced sharp beam of electrons. Sharp electron beams. Davison and Germer in an experiment use nickel crystal. As you know that the strain crystalline materials are material which have a proper periodic repetition of a unit cell. A unit cell of a crystal consists of uh, atoms which are basically present at a lattice point of a unit cell and these atoms have a specific periodic arrangement and the unit, the cell, the, and the crystal have a crystalline planes, and atoms are basically placed on the crystalline planes. So, uh, Germer used a nickel crystal, and third most important instrument used in a Davison Germer experiment was a detector, which was basically a circular detector. So, dear student, keep in mind that initially in Davison German experiment, Davison from electron gun, suppose this is an electron representation of electron gun, EG, from electron gun, Davison incidented highly energetic beam of electrons on the surface of a crystalline nickel. Crystal. So, it, as you know, that these passing or the distance between the planes of uh, in a nickel crystal is around 215 picometer. Is basically it is a passing between a lattice point uh, in a silicon. So the electron beam usually have a very shorter wavelength. It is around it is around 160 picometer. So whenever these electron beam incidented on the crystal lattice, they basically do a diffraction. And this diffraction was sometime constructive, constructive, and sometime it was destructive. So both type of interference were basically caused whenever the electron beam was incidented on the nickel crystal and the this the 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 diffraction of 
of a nickel uh, from a nickel beam from a nickel crystal by an electron beam was basically detected by a detector and on the basis of that the current and the detector was basically varied and which basically was an indication of an interference or uh, which was basically an indication of an interference in the form of a constructive and destructive. So on the basis of this experimental setup, Davison proved that uh, initially the electron, which were basically particles, but when they interacted with a nickel crystal, they basically behaved like a wave because the interference and as well as diffraction is a property of a wave. So now, dear student, let us comprehensively discuss the construction of a Davison Germer experiment and how this experiment become a successful. The basic part are same. Davison Germer used electron gun, nickel crystal, and a detector for a Davison Germer experiment. Experimental experimental setup. used by Davison and Jammer. This student, Davison and Jammer basically took an electron gun. Suppose this is a schematic representation of an electron gun. Electron gun usually consists of a filament and filament is usually made up of a tungsten. Tungsten. Similarly, electron gun is basically covered with a metal which is known as electrode. The role of an electrode is to liberate electrons and whereas the role of a filament uh, role of uh, role of these this filament is just to provide a so tungsten by application of a high voltage in an electron gun tungsten will provide filament will provide heat to the metallic electrode and this metallic electrode is usually in a Davison and German experiment it was made up of a barium oxide whose work function is phi is very less so they will easily liberate electron. So whenever this tungsten filament is heated, the heat due to thermionic emission, heat will cause an emission of an electron from a barium oxide electron. And this setup will basically consist of a variable potential source this is a variable potential source which basically changes a potential of an electrode and at the end this setup was basically connected with a very thin are very small bore or a hole or, or with s or the slit and the slit is basically the role of a slit is just to provide a narrow beam so this is slit so slit basically provide a narrow beam and secondly the slit let me write clean it so, this 
was a positive side and this side was negative side so there this slit was basically is is basically have a positive charge on it and it has a present at a very high potential so the student the uh, <clears throat> the electron beam uh, the the student the electron gun from a tungsten filament due to a thermionic emission will heat up the electrode an electrode will have electron on it since you know that the charge on electron is minus or it is negative charge on electron is negative so in order to accelerate these electron very faster we have basically incorporated a slit with a very positive or very high potential so the, due to high positive potential at the slit the electron from an electrode will move very fast and they will pass through the slit and since you know that the elect there uh, will be there is present a nickel crystal uh, or just just near the slit so nickel slit crystal have an atoms and these atoms are present in a crystal and the unit cell of the crystal have a uniform repetitive arrangement of atom in it okay so these atoms in a uh, in a crystal they are basically are present in a repetitive and cont in continuous fashion so whenever the electron beam incident on the nickel crystal the nickel crystal will deflect these electron beam and these electron beam deflected electron beams are basically detected by a detector suppose this is a schematic representation of a detector So electron beams will be will be detected by a detector in a form of interference. This interference could be a constructive interference and it could be a destructive interference. The destructive and constructive interference will be at a different angle of the rotation of uh, this detector. So, on the basis of interference caused by electron beam, it was proved by Davison and Germer that electrons basically behave like a wave. Electron is a particle and it may behave like a wave. So, this was basically an experimental proof of Davison and Germer, experimental proof of the Bry hypothesis. Let me conclude. Dear student, in Davison German experiment, Davison used and German used electron gun. Electron gun consists of a tungsten filament. That tungsten filament is heated up. So whenever this tungsten filament get heat up, this filament will cause the electrode to heat up, and barium oxide electrode was used, which was which have a low work function. So the barium oxide uh, electrode basically cause the generation of an electron beam. So these electron beam were basically, Davison and Germer were interested to know the nature of the electron beam produced by electrode. In order to know the nature of electron beam, these electron beam were accelerated in a, uh, in a, in, through a slit having a very high positive potential so due to very high positive potential you know that the negative charges are attracted by the positive charges so the slit will basically pass the electron with very high speed and these electron beams were basically infected or fall on a nickel crystal this is a representation of nickel crystal so nickel crystal crystal or crystalline materials are material which have an atom and these atoms are present at a lattice point and the lattice points of, of a crystal have a periodic and continuous arrangement or, uh, or orientation. So whenever these electron beam fall 
on the nickel crystal, these electron beam will, due to planes of the uh, lattice uh, in a crystal, these electron beam will cause construction, constructive and as well as destructive interference, which is detected by a detector. So on the basis of that, since you know that interference and as well as reflection or diffraction is a property of a wave. So this basically proves that electron, which is a particle, electron behave like a wave. So on the basis of Davison and German experiment, it was experimentally proved that electron behave like a wave. So now, dear student, what do you think? What will be the wavelength of electron when the electron beam when it fall on a nickel crystal? So dear student, Davison and Germer calculated the wavelength of electron beam when it fall on a nickel crystal. So since you know that crystal is a repetitive arrangement of an atom, suppose that this is a lattice point of a unit cell of a crystal and you know that the repetitive arrangement of a crystal um, uh, is basically uh, a repetitive arrangement of crystal or the, the, the atom present in a crystal are present at a lattice point and there is a a specific or there is a continuous planes present in a crystal or in a, a, a and the atom are basically present at the lattice point of the crystal so this is a representation of a lattice plane suppose this is a lattice plane and in lattice plane atoms are basically arranged in a periodic fashion in a repetitive way in nickel atoms as nickel crystals the distance between a plane is around 250 picometer d is a distance between a plane which is known as interplanar distance and interplanar distance between two plane of a nickel crystal is around 215 Picometer. So basically, dear student, in this, in, in the nickel crystal, uh, Germer and Davison basically incidented highly energetic electron beam. And suppose that these are the electron beam, E beams, which are basically incidented on nickel crystals. So these electron beams were deflected are diffracted from the nickel crystal like this similarly the next electron beam were incident on second atom of present at the lattice and in this way they were diffracted from the uh, lattice of an atom so now the electron beam which were diffracted or which were basically uh, reflected from a lattice point of a crystal, they cause constructive and as well as destructive interference. So, if the beam of electrons are in phase, like this, for this if the beam of electrons are in phase like this then there will be a constructive interference we will get a huge interference and if the beam of electron let's say this is called constructive interference And if the beam of electron are not in phase,
they are not in pairs then we will basically get a destructive interference so now the student Davison and Germer observed both constructive and as well as destructive interference whenever they incident electron beam on nickel crystals. So the student, the wavelength, the wavelength of the electron beam, which were basically cause a constructive interference in constructive interference in a uh, silicon uh, in a nickel crystal was calculated by a mathematical equation known as the, known as Bragg equation which is n lambda is equal to d into sine of theta now Davison and Germer observed that that a constructive interference appear around a 50 degree of rotation of detector from a nickel crystal. So he observed that he draw a graph between a current which was basically observed whenever electron beam from a nickel crystal reached a detector and he draw a graph between current and a voltage so he observed that around a 54 volt and at the angle of 50 there was a suppose that this is a 54 potential difference which is basically 54 volt which is applied on the slit of the uh, slit used in a Davison German experiment and the voltage is 54 volt he observed that around 54 volt there was a maximum constructive interference and the current was maximum so theta and the theta angle between a detector and incident and incident beam of elect, uh, electron was around 50 so at that angle 50 there was a maximum diffraction and maximum current observed so the student if we need to incorporate the value of theta which is 50 degree and d spacing as you know that between a plane of nickel is 215 picometer and n is basically it is a first diffraction or first maxima which is equal to one so basically we get a value of lambda as one lambda is equal to d spacing is 215 picometer into sine of 50 degree so we get that lambda is equal to 165 picometer so this lambda is a wavelength of an electron. So this was an experimental proof that proved by Davison and Germer that matter have associated waves, just like electrons, which is basically a particle, and it has an associated waves and its wavelength is 165 picometer. The student, now keep in mind that it is a rule of a diffraction that a wave is diffracted whenever their wavelength is closer to the wavelength or to the despacing of plane in a crystal. Since the wavelength of an electron is around 165 picometer, which is closer to the despacing of a nickel crystal, which is 215. Due to this, they cause a diffraction. And this diffraction basically validated experimentally that particles have associated waves. Davison and Germel also calculated theoretically 
and they also theoretically prove that particles have an associated waves and their wavelength for electron is also in a range of the wavelength of electron which is calculated experimentally. So now let us discuss a theoretical perspective of Davison and German experiment. So now this will let us do a theoretical calculation of theoretical calculation of wavelength of electron. As you know that according to De Broglie, wavelength of an electron or wavelength of a particle is equal to H divided by P. Our lambda is equal to H divided by P. Since you know that P is a momentum and H is a Planck constant, and you know that momentum is equal to mv. So suppose that this is an equation number one. m is a mass of an electron and v is a velocity of an electron and h is a Planck constant. So now as occurred in Davison and German experiment, electron beam were incident on a nickel crystal. This means that a potential which is applied on electron will be equal to work done by electrons or work done per unit charge. So this means that kinetic energy will be equal to work done by So you know that work done by an electron is equal to Q into a potential difference. Work will be equal to, since you know the charge on electron is E, it will be E into V. Or kinetic energy will be equal to E into V. V is a potential difference and E is a charge on electron. Now, that said, this is equation number two. Since you know that kinetic energy K into E is equal to half into M into V square. M is a mass of electron and V will be the velocity of electron. So we will incorporate equation number three in equation number two. So we will get that half into M V square is equal to e into v now multiplying two on both sides we will get mv square is equal to 2e into v please keep in mind that these v these two both v's are different V square is basically representing velocity and whereas this V represent a potential difference. Now, multiplying M on both sides, we will get M square, V square is equal to 2M e into V. Now, taking a square root, we will get MV is equal to 2M into v so we say this as equation number four where mv is equal to under root to mev so now putting this equation number four in equation number one we get lambda is equal to h divided by under root to m e into v so this is equation number five. So now dear student, lambda is equal to h divided by two 
m e into v now incorporate the value in this equation number five since you know that Planck constant is equal to 6.63 into 10 raised to power minus 34 whereas the mass of an electron is equal to 1.6 into 10 raised to power minus 19 and charge on an electron is equal to 9.1 into 10 raised to power minus 31 and voltage at which we get a maximum constructive interference is around 54 volts so we get lambda is equal to when we calculate all these values we get lambda is equal to 166 picometer so this wavelength is closer to the wavelength of x electron which were experimentally proved so this means that our theoretical results theoretical results theoretical results are very very closer to the experimental results confirm that a particle have a wave like a nature or particle have an associated so let me conclude the davison and germer experiment davison and germer experimentally and theoretically prove that a particle is associated with wave our particles have a wave nature it was de Broglie who proposed that a wave may behave like a particle and similarly particles have an associated waves the wave nature wave behaving as a particle was experimentally proved by Compton and as well as photoelectric effect whereas the nature of a particle having an associated waves was proved by Davison and Germer experiment. He proved it experimentally and as well as theoretically. So dear student, this is all about Davison-Germer experiment. So thank you for watching the lecture.